Welcome everybody, Gareth Jones here from Paris Technologies and today we're going to talk about a really interesting subject in FPNA, which is payroll planning. Now for every company I've ever worked for, for every company I've ever worked with, payroll is the single biggest uh, line item in their income statement. However, mostly people are not um, doing payroll planning very well. And the reason for that is it's quite hard to do it at a really granular level with using Excel or simple technology. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to use our free technology, Power Excel, and I'm going to show you how you might go about planning payroll in a lot of detail. I think it's going to add a lot of value to your companies. Okay, let's start with the main concepts. All right, so there's two concepts that are so useful to us when planning in payroll. One is headcount and one is FTE. Now let's start with headcount, right? What is headcount? Well, it's kind of useful because you're either here or you're not here. So it's either a one or a zero. It's a valuable point when we come to planning because we can leverage that in our calculation. All right, what about FTE? It stands for full-time equivalent and it's kind of the ratio of the amount of hours someone works in relation to a full-time employee. So if you think about a full-time employee works five days a week, maybe they work 40 hours. And a half-time, uh, someone who works half-time, maybe they work 20 hours, so they would be a 0.5 FTE. And someone who works three days out of five, maybe they're 0.6 FTE. And someone who works a lot of overtime, maybe, depending on your payroll, they're a 1.15 FTE, for example. So these are the two concepts that we're going to leverage now in um, our modeling in, with uh, payroll. Okay, let's have a look at an individual calculation, something really simple. Um, and I'm not going to go too much in detail in the actual calculation. They, they can be different in different parts of the world, but there's a lot of um, similarity, right? So the first thing is that we come eventually down to sort of an annual salary. So here the annual salary or the monthly salary, uh, 21000 approximately, right? Then after that, you get some additional costs that, that the company bears. In, um, the, this example has the American um, common ones, FICA, FUTA, SUTA, Medicare. But it's a similar concept around the world. There's some cost that you need to pay as a company towards the, um, to, to, the, to the government or to the state. And it's usually a percentage of the, the person's payroll up to a maximum. So it's a pretty simple calculation. We should be able to all model with it, right? So here we've got actual data to March. Um, we're looking at a fictional, um, fictional character, Robert De Niro, in litigation in Chicago. And I'm, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start forecasting. So in, in this tool that we're using, we're using a free version of our Power Excel tool. I can change the filter from actual to forecast. So first thing we're going to look at then is the first principle of payroll planning is that if I don't do anything, the future looks like the past, right? So my calculation should just continue until I make a change. That's a critical point, right? So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look to manipulate this headcount um, function and watch what happens to the calculation, right? Now, I, this is equivalent of just using a nested if statement, looking at some specific text that I'm looking for and looking at a specific date. So obviously, one of the things we're going to do with staff is we're going to terminate them and I'm going to just say terminate in August. So all I'm going to do is turn off the headcount, and that's going to turn off all the other uh, calculations. Very simple. And if I want to move that, I'm just going to use that uh, three-letter date, and it can and move. So it's really nice and simple. And this is the idea. It's just going to be like a nested if statement, right? So we can terminate um, employees. What else could we do with an employee, right? Well, one of the common things we see in payroll is a leave of absence. The most common being maternity leave or paternity leave. Um, there can be others. So we need to be able to a model with that. So let's just put leave of absence and let's just put two dates. Again, it's a simple concept. It's just uh, an, a nested if statement and it's looking at a left and a right uh, three. And if I get two dates, it just leaves a little gap like that. Very simple and easy to model with something like that, right? So that's um, the first idea is that, hey, if we've got existing employees, let's be able to plan them um, with some simple inputs, and it's going to trigger a little uh, change in our calculation, and we're going to leverage the headcount to change um, the, to, to, to change the shape. Okay, let's just leave this with a terminator, simple one in June, right? 
Okay, so simple, easy to do um, in Excel, one employee. Okay, but what if we've got lots of employees? Well, first of all, I don't want to be um, dealing with it like this. I want to be looking at a kind of a list, right? I don't have time in, in business to generally plan at the individual level. What I want to do is I want to look at everybody in a long list. Now, depending on how your business is segmented, whether it's by department, whether it's by region or by entity, you want to filter this list slightly differently. In this particular example, I've just let everything um, be visible. So I can go down now and I can plan everybody. So as you see here, Robert De Niro, we've terminated him in June. What am I going to do with my other employees, right? So I can, I, I just need to input data here. Now, if I can, I can go around and say, well, I remember this guy had applied for leave of absence. Um, September, and we moved down. And if we know that, for example, the Chicago office is um, closing, I can just copy this down and look wherever there's a Chicago. I can place it in. This is the type of thing we want to do. We want to make it really nice and simple for the user to those people who know the staff, it, um, you know, personally or in charge of the staff, are able to fill in a little form like this, and it's allowing our calculation to happen. Now, let's just have a what we've got here is we've kind of got a centralized. Um, data set now, and we're feeding it down into those individual calculations. So if I just tile this up and have a look at that, if you're using this Power Excel technology, it's kind of nice because you can do it both ways, right? So here, I'm terminating in June. If I go and change that to September, it's, it's going to change it over here, but I have this two-way type of idea. So if I go and say that's October, it's going to complete. Now, that, that's really neat. It means that you can... It, pick certain specific individuals, plan them at a detailed level, deal with everybody else in a, in a sort of a bulk way. They're really powerful, so it's one of the really nice things about this tool. And I'm just going to reiterate that this demo here is using our free version of our tool. You can do up to 500 employees using this tool. So yeah, I would encourage you to take advantage of that if you do a lot of payroll planning in your organization. All right, so we've talked about existing employees. What about new employees, right? So with those, I would encourage you to use a different um, section of your model. It's, we call them adjustments. So keep them separate from the actual list of employees where you've got the employees' names. You have a little section for uh, new joiners or adjustments. So the most obvious one, right, is um, we need to start somebody. Now, if you have a look here, when I was planning existing employees, everything was going to stay the same. Here, I need a little bit more information, right? So first of all, I need to know what um, is going to be their salary. This particular model, the salary is a lookup. It's between the law school class and the title. It's going to bring back a salary. In your organization, it might just be the title. It might be a combination of the title and the region. Whatever it is, it's a simple lookup, um, and you're going to get the result, right? I need to know when to start them, and then I, know, I need to know the full-time equivalent, especially if they earn overtime, like this one does. It has an overtime factor. Um, that's a common calculation, so you need to deal with that. All right, so we've got start as the keyword that we're going to look for in our adjustments, and then we can just change that. Wherever we start the person, um, it's just going to flow. I can't start them before March because that's the history, right? So let's do that. All right, now what else? What about leave of absences, right? Let's see what happens when I, I plan a leave of absence for somebody. Let's go to June to September. All right, so here you see something a little different, right? Before, we saw a gap in the calculation. Here, I'm seeing a negative calculation. This is a val valuable modeling tool because what happens with things like leave of absence is that you're not really sure exactly who's going to take a leave of absence if you take maternity leave, for example. Um, you know this statistically you're going to have people taking maternity leave, but you may, may not know in advance which people. So what you want to do is you want to plan everybody at full. And then you plan some negative adjustments for leave of absences. You might do them quarterly, for example. And then when you have a leave of absence, you can match the two, the budget with the um, actual. So it's really powerful. So here you're going to put a leave of absence and you're going to make it negative. The other side of the coin, though, is you maybe want to plan a leave of absence replacement. right? And the reason for that is that very often in companies, um, when people take a leave of absence, they're replaced with a temporary person, right? Those temporary people tend to be more expensive. So if you've got a large organization, you've got a lot of leave of absence, a lot of replacements, you use a lot of temps, 
you're going to want to plan this quite carefully so that you get that difference in um, expense. That way, you're not going to be surprised when you find that you're over, um, you, the actual expenses are over budget because you didn't really, you weren't able to plan with enough detail to incorporate the temp cost. So this allows you to do that. You can have a leave of absence replacement, you can have a different title, and you can have a different expense. It gives you a lot of flexibility. Okay, again, we don't want to be planning these leave of absences like this, and I'm going to just change this back to a start so it's very obvious, and I'm going to put it back in April, for example. We want to be looking at kind of a list of adjustments, right? So let's have a look at what it might look like. So in this particular list, I've um, I've got an associate. I've got an I filtered this by department. So I'm looking at the administration department. I've got these adjustments available to me in these different offices. This list can be very very large if you need it to be. And I just wanted to show you another element of our technology, which is really nice and neat, which is that you can capture text data. So here. I've got a name, I've got some comments here, I've got the, the, the detail I need. Let's try and put in another one, right? I'm going to call it G. Jones. And I'm going to start in May. And let's put in the same idea, 2019 maybe. And I'm a one full-time equivalent, and I'm also an associate. And I'm just using Excel's functionality to, to fill this stuff in. It's fine. Now I'm going to put a comment in here, right? Now I just wanted to show you in our technology, you can have really big comments. So here's quite a long one, but I mean it could be a whole essay. So for example, you could be copying out someone's email that they've sent you and just pasting it into this little comment section here. So it's it's filling in these comments. Now this is really useful because especially with payroll, there's a lot of little bits and pieces that come together to make your budget or your forecast. And maybe later, three months later, someone asks you, why did you do that? Or why is my budget slightly off compared to my actual? And you need to refer to the, the little pieces of information you've got. So if you have a look with our technology, you can filter and just have the comments, right? And this, you know, however you want to filter it. But here we've got just the comments. So I've got two comments there right now, and you can see them in that list. Now let's go and put in a couple more. And I'm going to put them out of order. If I go back to that list, I've got those comments now filtering out now for me. It can be really useful, very, very useful in payroll where you've got this idea that, you, you know, there's little pieces of information coming at you from emails, coming at you from conversations you've had. And, and later, a few months later, all of that becomes really relevant when you're struggling to match your actual data against the budget and explain the variance. So I just wanted to give you um, a good idea of that. All right. So we've got the idea of planning in lists. We've got this idea of having these adjustments to deal with all um, the, the, the oddities. But what about the final result, right? So let, I'm going to very, very simple report here for you. Um, it's nice and simple. It's got all of those departments across the top. It's got all of the regions down. And we've got a, a number there, $6.3 million, right? And I'm filtering on total timekeepers. Now let's go back and say, well, we remember... Robert De Niro's calculation. Let's have a look at that. So there's his calculation. He's in litigation in Chicago. Does that tie in with that individual calculation that we saw? Let's have a quick look and pick this one up. All right. There it is. Okay, great. Same number. Let's manipulate this and change it. Let's say, let's terminate him in May. And as I've done it it's changed perfect and of course it's immediately changed the total and it's now down to 6.1 million right and every single member is calculated so if I just pick another one anybody I want I can have a look at this calculation and every single person is calculated and ready to be reported on. It's really powerful. I'm just going to show you one last element of this tool. So what's really, really nice about this tool, if you have a look at this information, it's not calculated in Excel. It's just displayed here, right? If I delete that information and I recalculate it, it comes back. If I try and change the data, 
won't allow me, right? So it's really powerful. So what it means is if you adopt this technology and it's a free technology, um, you've got this ability to plan at the really detailed level. You allow um, other members of your team to adjust things in a sort of a bulk method and you can get the result immediately, um, so which really allows you to do planning in a lot more detail. I really encourage you, if you've got um, up to 500 employees, to try this technology, it's free. Um, if you've got a more complex business, then reach out to me on LinkedIn um, or on our website, and um, we can offer you some uh, even more uh, powerful engines to help you with your business. Okay, thank you.